x CHE441 Advanced Chemical Kinetics We have a brief course outline here. Number one is a review of weight laws and reaction mechanisms including the steady state approximation, experimental techniques in chemical kinetics, discharge flow, stopped flow systems, flash photolysis, relaxation techniques. Number two will involve collision theory of reaction rates, where we'll learn mini free path, collision frequency, gas phase reaction dynamics. Topic number three will be transition state theory, activated complex theory, sometimes as it's called. Now the activated complex activation barrier potential energy surfaces of our curve. Four will be complex reactions, chain reactions, explosions, and branch chain reactions. And five, if we manage to go that far, will be on reactions in solution. Nature of liquid dissolvation, ions and molecules, effect of solvent polarity on reaction rates. The references for this course is P.W. Atkins, Physical Chemistry, 6th edition, or 7th or 8th. Uh, MJ Peeling and W. Sickens Reaction Kinetics. Now let's look at reaction rates. What is the rate of a reaction? This is the rate of change of concentration of the reactants or products at a particular instant during a reaction in concentration per unit time. It is the gradient of the curves given below. For the issue of Reactants, you follow the red curve, so the gradient anywhere of this red curve represents the rate of reaction as far as reactants are concerned. When we look at the product end, we can use that as well, and the blue curve shows you the process and a gradient at any instant on that gives you the rate of the reaction. Right. Rate law for first order reaction. Let's try and revise this. Let's look at an elemental reaction such as A giving you products. Now, the rate law is given by minus dA by dt, therefore meaning consumption of A, is equal to K1A. Now, if we rearrange and integrate between the limits of A0 and A, and on the right-hand side between 0 and T, we get natural log of A over A0 being equal to minus K1T. That's a typical first order process. And for the second order of the type, let's use the simplest or probably let's use the most difficult in this case, A plus B giving you products. Now with this, the rate law is given by minus dA by dt is equal to minus dB by dt, which is equal to K2A times B. K2 is the second order rate constant and the integrated equation is Kt is equal to 1 over A minus B naught, A naught minus B naught, natural log of A times B naught over A naught times B. If the rate law for a given reaction is Rate is equal to K times A to the alpha and B to the beta. We can now begin talking about the order of the reaction in these terms. In this case, A is the order with respect to the reaction of A and beta is with respect to B. The overall order is alpha plus beta. The order may be an integer fractional or indefinable for complex reactions particularly. It is always obtained from experiments only. You can't use the stoichiometric equation. How about molecular rate of a reaction? This is the number of molecules which come together to react and is independent of the order of reaction. A unimolecular reaction involves the breakup of or rearrangement of a single molecule while a bimolecular reaction involves two atoms or molecules. Now, in most cases, we analyze reactions according to half-life. Now, what is half-life? The half-life, usually referred to as tier half of a reaction, is the time taken 
for the concentration of reactants to fall to half of their initial value. For zero order, T half is equal to A0 over 2K, that is, it's proportional to A0, the initial concentration. For first order, T half is equal to natural log of 2 over K, that is, it is independent of the initial concentration A0. For second order, of the type A plus A to give you products, T half is equal to 1 over K times A0, that is, it is inversely proportional to the initial concentration A0. Note that T half can be used to determine the order of a reaction as shown above. Now let's look at reaction types. A reaction can be elementary, that is a single stage, single step. For instance, A giving you products, like a rearrangement, like a dissociation. It can be reversible. For instance, A plus B giving you C plus D, which give you A plus B. It could also be consecutive, where A plus B in the reversible reaction to give you C plus D, which finally gives you E plus F. It may also be parallel, where A can give you B, and but A can also give you C. It could also be a combination of N of O, all of these types. Right, let's now look at complex reactions. A good example of a complex reaction is the dissociation of N2O5 reaction. When heated, N2O5 breaks up to give you nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Let us look at the mechanism. First, N2O5 in a reversible reaction to give you NO2 plus NO3 star. Now, NO3 star is a free radical. That free radical then reacts with NO2, so K2 as the rate constant, to give you NO plus O2 plus NO2, the final product. Now, NO, which is a free radical, and NO3, which is also a free radical, may then associate to give you 2NO2 with the rate constant K3. That is thought to be the mechanism. Now, let's use this mechanism to try and understand the kinetics. To do this, we invoke the steady state approximation. We have to get the rate of decomposition of the intermediates because if they are intermediates, true intermediates, then after the induction time, their concentration will be constant. Therefore, the NO3 star by the T will be equal to K1 into N2O5 minus K minus 1 plus K2 all into NO2 times NO3 star minus K3 NO times NO3 star where all the negative terms are consumption terms and the positive terms on the right hand side are formation terms. Similarly, for nitric oxide, the NO star by the T is going to be equal to K2 into NO2 NO3 star minus K3 NO and O3 star. Now, as we mentioned earlier, NO star and NO3 star are intermediates. Consequently, after induction time, their rate of formation is equal to their rate of consumption. That means their concentration does not change with time after the induction time. And this can be written as the NO3 star dt is equal to naught, and the NO star dt is equal to naught as well. We can then use this in the mechanism above and obtain the expressions for the two intermediates. This, this is what we do. NO star is equal to K2. NO2 over K3 and NO3 star is equal to K2 N2O5 
over k minus 2 plus 2k2 and O2. But the rate right equation for the decomposition of that can be written as minus dn2O5 by dt is equal to k1 into n2O5 minus k minus 1, NO2, and NO3 star. So if we obtain expressions for NO3 star, we can now substitution, substitute it in this rate equation. And when we do that, we obtain that minus the NO2, the N2O5, the T, is equal to 2K1, K2, all over K minus 1 plus 2K2 times N2O5. Now here, the experimentally observed K then will contain 2K1, K2 over K minus 1 plus 2K2. So according to this, the reaction is pretty